Hi, it's your favorite slut, Alyssa Jones or Desert Rose. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I've had a good week. I'm going to talk about veganism today. I'm going to talk about like veganism, animal liberation, and just where I'm at with the movement. Um, so I did, um, when I first became vegan, I did a lot of I joined the activism side of it where we would go to vigils. I did anonymous for the voiceless. Um, I've done like volunteer work at sanctuaries. I grew up on a farm too. So doing farm work again was fun, but very taxing. I don't know. Like, okay. So for one, taking care of animals, is kind of like because there's myths right so the vegan community for sure is a cult and like i can break that down in a video if somebody wants a video about how like i left mormonism which was a cult and immediately joined veganism which is only an online cult <laughs> it's has in per like i made i went to vegan events which were very fun um, the community itself is a very fun community. So if, if you're looking for, uh, okay, you shouldn't be vegan just for yourself. The theology around veganism is avoiding all harm whenever possible and plausible. So if you don't have to like eat an animal or if you don't have to cause harm with the way that you consume society like as a consumer because we all have to be consumers that's how capitalism works it forces yeah forces us all to be consumers and so since we're forced into this consumer role um everybody's attempting to be as ethical about their consumptions as they can right and so if you're trying to be as ethical as you can there's a limit to where you can't be ethical and there's always that limit i became a perfectionist in it and it led to it will it adds to my eating disorder because i have like uh, i'm self-diagnosed orthorexic um just because I'm like obsessed with eating properly, obsessed with it. I'm obsessed. Like I found out that you have to rinse your rice and I'm like, oh, I gotta rinse the rice. I know. Yeah, I'm white. I get it. Like if, <laughs> but I grew up in Mexico. <laughs> so I'm like a more fun white and I'm also Mexican. <laughs> so I'm not just like, a normal American, you know, a Mexican American. Eh. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> why I eat cheese every now and then now, I understand that cheese is from an ethical standpoint, the worst dairy like the dairy industry is the worst industry not the worst industry in the world like i guess i need to learn more about more industries if that makes sense to figure out and do research on exactly which industry is the worst industry people say that my industry the sex worker industry is the worst industry in the world and it's like it's rooted in entertainment. We're trying to, ha, you know, do tricks and flips and more things. We're just entertaining people. Um, yeah, so I suffered the consequences and gained the weight back, oh no, not all the weight back. So I went on a vegan journey, lost a lot of weight, you know, was in my mental illness because I'm very mentally ill. Oh my God, I had like, I talked to my therapist today. Holy fucking shit, holy fucking shit. I went over all this crazy shit. That, so I grew up in LeBaron. Um, I'm Ervil LeBaron's great granddaughter. And the LeBaron's 
for some reason, <laughs> keep getting targeted for murder. <laughs> And other people that are, if, if, if you just start associating with me, um, just because my, of my family's like political status and gangster status, you get swept into a world that is very different from regular normal society. There's parts of society that are normalized, which ties into veganism again. I'm gonna tie it back to veganism again, okay? Um, there's por the parts of normal society that are considered normal. And I was convinced that through like other YouTubers and the vegan world that you can eventually see other people choosing not to cause harm to animals and like um there's just some sick fuckers out there who enjoy torturing weaker creatures than them like not to say that workers okay the the working conditions for like if you don't care that much about the animal aspect of animal rights, then you could care about the worker aspect, right? Because we all have jobs and we're all workers in society. And so if you take on a worker role, you must care about other workers, right? So, yeah. Essentially, if we all consume, because it's just an industry, less and less animal products, eventually the suffering will stop. And like, we've all seen the footage and we've all seen what that industry has done. And right now, the rainforest in Brazil, which produces a lot of oxygen for the planet, um, they've worked on their issues in Brazil because there was a movement, which is good. The animal rights movement, like, the history of animal rights is amazing. If you've never learned the history of animal rights or anything about this topic, um, it's very in-depth. Like, we as of right now are treating animals so bad that it's worse than we've ever treated another human, which like, I have always loved animals. <laughs> um, my family, we owned a dairy farm at one point and owning a dairy farm was the most traumatic one. I'm, I'm very traumatized, I have PTSD, um, but Owning the dairy farm and seeing those machines get sucked on a live animal all the time and watching them have to breastfeed, which is painful. Um, breastfeeding is painful for humans and, and it's very painful. Ask any mother. They don't want to talk about it because it's traumatizing. Every mother is traumatized from that experience. And so it's no different than cows or animals or pigs. Um, you, even though people don't drink pig milk, we drink, you know, cow milk is so gross. Why am I fucking eating cheese? I don't know what I'm saying, but I've sinned. Whatever it means <laughs> to be a vegan, I've sinned. Like, does that make sense? Like, I have a lot of religious trauma too that I could get into further. Like, I don't, I wanna know what my audience wants to know about all of that kind of stuff. LeBarons are now billionaires. So all of that activism I did on TikTok to try to warn people about the LeBarons and warn people about my family, um, they're now billionaires. So they, some family members of mine are now billionaires. And so like, that has blown my mind, but it also 
makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. I'm still working through all of that. They proved in court, this is about veganism. But I'll just finish just telling you guys, because also a life update and like, I want my channel to be mostly rambling. Um, we want to go outside? I gotta let the cat out. Um, yeah. It's very complicated. <laughs> um, I still have uh, TikTok took down one of my pages and I know they took it down because I was giving information out against billionaires. You can't snitch on a billionaire. They don't want their privacy and information, even though they should because we should treat them like celebrities and follow them around. But we should be more obsessed with, but like, okay, so classism, let's talk about classism because veganism is essentially a classist thing. You are elitist if you can be vegan for a long period of time. Like I, if you are a vegan for, and you could do it for years and years at a time and keep your health up at the same time, like you have some sort of stability in your life to where you are able to do that. And I feel extremely jealous of the vegans that can do it and I feel um, just bitter. <laughs> I feel bitter <laughs> about it all uh, just because yeah that's the the honesty and the truth of it like it's not accessible to everybody even though a lot of cultures are already plant-based like um my family's very plant but they're rich so that's not really an argument like to be like oh my family can be vegan we we, we can be vegan and we can have our lab grown meat sent to us even though lab grown meat will become accessible at some point you know you can eat your own meat for a few thousand dollars you can send in your dna to get to grow pieces of meat of yourself and then you can go to a restaurant and eat yourself because cannibalism is real cannibals are real they have an industry like can't like I got kidnapped by cannibals it's a long story I have a lot of really like traumatic stories that I don't share um, I guess talking about eating meat someone in Mexico um, cannibals and the cartel like when you're in a cartel and you have bodies you got to dispose of got to dispose of those bodies somehow you know so a lot of the cartel forces people to eat other people to get rid of evidence um i was personally never forced to eat somebody but they tried to make me eat a finger once in soup but that's okay because I'm in therapy now I think this is where the video will end and I hope you have a good week <laughs> I hope you have a good day okay goodbye